Consciousness. It is something that we all have, yet remains the most mysterious human trait. This is a quality that every human being possesses. We can be aware of our own consciousness during waking times, when we are deep in contemplation, or even pondering the vastness of the universe. To better understand what consciousness is, many attempts have been made to define exactly what it is. Perhaps it's a state of wakefulness when you are aware of your surroundings. Some say that it is the ability to be aware of something going on within oneself. Others say that it is a sense of self-awareness. All of these are considered to be valid descriptions of consciousness. Since time immemorial, philosophers have debated the exact nature of consciousness and what it means to be a sentient or even sapient being. Advances in neuroscience have given us an intricate understanding of exactly how the brain works. We know the regions of the brain, where memories are stored, where information from our eyes and ears are formed. We even have been able to transmit thoughts from one person to another via advanced neurotechnology. However, the source or cause of consciousness continues to elude even the most diligent of seekers. But there are some who may have found the answer. Because everybody's totally fixed on matter is the ultimate reality, they're trying to explain how consciousness could possibly come out of matter, and they're getting nowhere. They've got theories in quantum physics that try, theories in information sciences, chemical theories, nothing works. But nobody dares question the assumption, and the assumption is that matter is unconscious. And that's the problem. If matter is unconscious, the problem is how on earth does consciousness, awareness, ever arise out of something that has no awareness? Matter and energy are emanations of some deeper intrinsic order. All these seemingly separate selves, seemingly separate identities, going about their own lives, living what appears to be a separate existence. And yet we are all fundamentally sharing the same unified consciousness that the universe is made of. We've now seen scientific proof that the universe emanates from a geometric seed that doesn't have any space or time. Since we are conscious, consciousness must be in that seed. All of the universe is emanating from this. So there is scientific grounding to support the law of one philosophical stance, which is that in fact, there is a one infinite creator and the universe itself is a living conscious being. Space, time, energy, matter, and biology are created by a universal consciousness. Our idea about subatomic particles are, as physics class has shown us, little billiard balls. You know, that's what we think of. But actually, a subatomic particle is not that. It's a, it's a vibrating packet of energy trading information and energy with other subatomic particles and this background energy field. So a subatomic particle is essentially a shapeshifter. So when you look down at matter at that tiny level, what you find is there's no such thing as a thing. It, the, the unit of the universe isn't a thing, it's a relationship. It's the relationship between those subatomic particles. Scientists have been able to detect and record this energy field, but what we see as background energy field may well be a unified field of intelligent energy. This energy is more than just intelligent. It is omnipresent throughout all of time and space and permeates everything in existence. We've looked at the idea that the gravitational field is in fact a fluid-like essence of the universe that all matter arises from. It's the source of matter, energy, consciousness, spirituality. All of the things that we see in the universe, both physical and non-physical, arise from this source field. When you start factoring in the whole idea of a quantum energy field, then that is a wonderful, neat metaphor to understand 
things that connections that occur between people or between people and other living things like plants across time and across space. It is a self-organizing universe and it is a self-correcting universe. And the embryo knows how to turn into a baby. The acorn knows how to turn into an oak tree. Within nature, it is obvious that there is a natural intelligence at work. Marcus Aurelius, in his writing, The Meditations Contemplated, for there is one universe made up of all things, and one God who pervades all things, and one substance, and one law, and one reason. In a lesser known work of Charles Darwin, the formation of vegetable mold through the action of worms, he documented how far earthworms acted consciously and how much mental power they displayed. He concluded that there was no absolute threshold between lower and higher animals, even Albert Einstein offered support to this idea of a unified consciousness with all living things. In his 1949 work, The World as I See It, he calls for us to embrace all living creatures and the whole of nature. Whatever that original source of consciousness that has brought everything into creation, visible and invisible, we're just aspects of that. It actually highlights how much bigger and greater the Creator is. If I realize that I am a child of God, that I'm just an idea in the mind of God, then and only then do I get to realize that you are the same thing. And on that realm, there is no separation between us. On that realm, there is no competition between us. We're talking about a universal consciousness where I'm going to talk to the Spirit of God within every living being. Now, whether we call that the zero-point energy field, we call that universal intelligence, we call it God. The zero-point energy field is the new name for God. So it's an ocean of holographic records that houses within it the history of every living being and makes the connection possible through means of a quantum process. And that quantum process is unconditional love. Unconditional love is the key to understanding the nature of our connection while this intelligent and creative field permeates everything in our universe, its loving and creative nature is what draws us all together and binds us to the universe and each other. If my energy is not coming from love, compassion, and forgiveness by whatever name I give it, then I am making a world that will not be happy for myself and others, by the way. You know, you've got religious fears, you've got skepticism, you've got all sorts of walls that are there to stop humanity to increase its own cosmic consciousness. And they're all distancing themselves from the spirit and from the face and the tools of God. And that's wrong. You cannot let go of the Creator. We have a metaphor of ourselves or an image of ourselves as the hero up against it all. The whole idea is about being right, being first, being individual. That's been our programming. If we have a hard drive, it's been programmed with, I win, you lose. This is absolutely against nature, and that's why we're in the mess we're in. This is what selfish looks like. You know, it's hard to understand how much that definition of ourselves really informs how we operate, because not all cultures do. They think of themselves as being all connected, and from that, they create a very different kind of society. You are born with divine consciousness. The whole point of being on the earth is to realize that and live your life in the pursuit of justice and compassion from the profoundest peace and the wildest, wildest love. The state of joyful, interpenetrating, interrelated love with all things is already here. It's on the earth. It's not in some other where. It's here. And the whole point of waking up to your divine consciousness is that you wake up to this radiance of divine presence in the universe, in other beings, and in yourself. There's another way of being, another mode of consciousness, that we can free ourselves up from this attachment, this materiality. And that when we do that, we begin to become more in tune with our world, with our environment, with other people. We become more compassionate. So I think the next stage is, having realized that's the basic problem, is then say, OK, what do we know? Just looking at the world's spiritual traditions and other metaphysical traditions, what do we know that can really help free up human consciousness? Forging a connection with this universal consciousness 
is something that is available to everyone. However, we live in a turbulent world full of stressful lifestyles and dramatic conflicts that continuously tear us away from this source of life and unconditional love. We have literally been programmed to remain separate in order to better serve the needs of those in control. To remember where we came from, we must learn to see beyond these manufactured illusions, to open our hearts and minds to the unified force binding all of creation. There is a reluctance, and in some cases an outright resistance, for the mainstream media, mainstream academia, classrooms, textbooks, to share the new discoveries. This would be important at any time, but it's especially critical right now because we are at this moment of crisis. We have made an incredible technological advancement. We will go on the moon, we have GPS, we have the internet, we are up here on the physical realm of consciousness. But in the spirit we are still 2,000 years ago in deceptive, dogmatic religious teaching. The gap needs to be adjusted, and that can be accomplished with cosmic consciousness, where not only you, but the greed the people that are in power, the people that are in charge of your life, once they become cosmic conscious. Now we are talking about a very, very big difference. Empire isn't playing a low consciousness game, it's playing a high consciousness game. That means that it needs our consent to function. It says, I'm gonna change your reality, is that okay? And you go, yep, right, and then it can do it. If you say no, it can't touch you. It cannot touch you, it can do nothing. This is where I believe we are now. I believe that the rise of consciousness is allowing us to move rapidly towards that and realizing we can move beyond the technology because the technology is actually in our bodies. Our bodies are the, the highest level of technology and we can imagine. The first thing to realize is to take responsibility for our own consciousness. It's easy to say, you know, other people must change, but we're all part of them, I'm part of them, we must all change. And the only person I really have responsibility for is myself. It's how do I free myself from outdated conditioning? Illusions are as powerful in their effects as is the truth. So free will is that I can think whatever I want to think. It's like I can make my theme that I'm a daughter of God, or I can make my theme something else. But to the extent to which I make it something else, the vision of one world costs you the vision of the other. So when I get lost in the story and in the manufactured, made up illusions of the world, what are you gonna be? What's your brand? What are you gonna do? What's your strategy? How are you gonna make it happen? I, by definition, am entering into a realm where I'm always going to be seeking and I'm never going to be finding. Once you realize that the whole universe is an emanation of consciousness, you can dissolve your karma by forgiveness and by accepting everything in the universe as being purely sacred. The consciousness of the universe wants us to grow into more than we are now. And that is our salvation. And if we worked on that collectively, if institutions, individuals, organizations, whatever, made that a real focus, I think in a very short time, we could actually have processes, techniques, things we could disseminate to the public, which would really encourage that awakening of consciousness. When we start living according to the definition of who we really are and start wiping that hard drive clean, only then will we evolve to another level. It's the rising of the golden yeast of passionate love consciousness in millions and millions of human beings as a response to this appalling evolutionary crisis that we've created out of our own lunacy. And this passionate love consciousness, passionate for compassion, passionate for harmony, passionate for balance, passionate for justice, is rising now like a golden yeast in millions of human beings of all kinds all over the world. I just think it's an exciting time if we all understand that message of how powerful we really are and start living it. You know, sometimes they'll say, oh, well, that's for them. It can't be for me. Well, yeah, it is for you. It's for all of us. And don't we all want to live this most empowered life that we can live and live the life we dream? I mean, it's not just for other people. It is for each and every one of us if we choose make the decision to do it. The reality we think we live in is merely an illusion created 
and perpetuated by the forces who stand to gain from you remaining separate from the infinite love and wisdom that emanates from the source of all creation. Of course, you always have the free will to choose to live in this world of illusions or to share in a collective vision of life, light, love, and liberty that originates beyond the confines of our limited physical time-space reality. To seek beyond the illusions is to find deeper meanings of the pure energy we call love. It is learning to share it, not for personal gratification, but for the benefits of all sentient beings so that they too will learn to live in a life free of suffering and illusions.